Hi everyone, it's Mr. H here, and we're going to look at exponential trigonometric functions and other functions as we graph the picture in front of you. Join me as we graph each individual function, and then we learn how to use inequalities to color it in. So we're going to use all these functions that you can see there on the left, and we're going to graph each one at a time and show how that affects the graph. So the first thing I wanted to do was make a 100 by 100 area to draw my picture in. So what I did is I graphed y equals 100 and x equals 100. And you can see that now gives me boundaries with the axes to make my picture in. Now I also did some restrictions there. I, I let, in the case of y equals 100, I let x be between 0 and 100. So then it stopped at those values. And then it didn't go outside of those. And I did the same thing with y with the x equals 100 line. I drew the same lines using the same ideas for the lines along the axes, and now I have my nice area to draw the picture in. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to draw the bottom of the uh, bottom of the tree. And so in order to do that, I used a cosine function, and then I translated that up a little bit so that it wasn't sitting on the very bottom of the picture. And I did x minus 50. And so what that x minus 50 does is it shifts it 50 to the right. Now that's not in particular uh, importance, but what that ensured it did is it just made sure that at the middle of the picture, right at 50, that it's exactly symmetrical about that point at 50. So it's exactly the same on the left side as it is on the right side. Then I set my restrictions from 10 to 90, and so the x values cannot go beyond those so that it fits in the box that I made. The next thing I did is I added the main trunk of the tree, and so I did that with two exponential functions. The first exponential function, uh, I, both with base 2, but the first one I made get really steep really fast by making the a value 3. And then I shifted it 45 to the right. That's what the x minus 45 did. I shifted it 45 to the right. Because if I don't have that 45 there, you can see that what happens is that is actually not even showing on the grid there. But if I start putting a number in there, the bigger the number, the more it shifts to the right. And so 45 ensured that it was 5 away from the middle of my picture. And then I did the same thing with the other side, but the other side, in order to make it go the other way, I had to make the exponent negative. So uh, I made it a negative exponent, and then I shifted it 55 to the right. Again, if I shift that 45 to the right, it's then kind of crossing uh, 45 is where it's symmetrical about. But I want it to be symmetrical about the line x equals 50. So I shifted it 55 so that it's 5, the one line is 5 to the left of my midline, and the other line is 5 to the right of my midline. Now you notice as well, I put some restrictions on X and Y there. Uh, that was just to ensure that it, uh, it didn't go out beyond 100 on the X axis or on the below zero on the X axis. And then the restrictions on the Y ensure that it doesn't go up above the bottom of the tree. And so with those restrictions in place, I then was able to start graphing the actual sides of the tree. Now this is tricky. And so um, this is a, a function that isn't usually gone over in much detail uh, at a high school level, but it's still something that we could do, and you can see how this would work by subbing some numbers in. Um, and so the idea is there is if I take the x value, or negative x value, and then I, it's equal to sine y plus 0.5y minus 45. And so a few things happen here. The 50, uh, what that's doing is that's ensuring that it's, like if I make that 75, for example, uh, then it goes really high. But if I uh, make it 50, it comes brings it a little lower. If that was zero, it would be completely below the x-axis. Uh, and then the 45, what the 45 does is you can see here, if I make that like 55, uh, it does a same, similar shift. And so by making it 45, that just ensures that it comes down and meets the bottom at that point. Now, I've restricted that from 50 to 90. And the reason I've done that, because if I go beyond 50, like if I go to 40, for example, if I just change that to 40, then what that does is it would extend beyond where I want it to go. And so I want it to stop at 50 because that's the middle of my tree. Now I did the same thing on the other side. And what I did on the other side is I just literally made it uh, the opposite. So instead of the, the, the same function sine y plus 0.5y minus 45, but I just switched instead of x minus 50, I did 50 minus x, which I suppose if you put the negative in there, it would become x minus 50, positive x minus 50. Uh, and then I restricted that between 10 and 50. And so by restricting it between 10 and 50 on the x values, that's the other side of the tree. Now you might wonder why I have the y value be greater than 12. If I get rid of that y value being greater than 12, you'll notice that this, this function there on the side of the tree comes back in uh, inside of 90 because the x value is less than 90. And so it actually goes 
past 90 and then back inside of 90. And so in order to cut that last little corner bit off, I'm restricting the Y value so that it's bigger than 12. And so when I do that, that 12 is approximately where that cosine function is. And so that ensures that everything below that gets cut off. Same thing with the other side. If I didn't restrict that, I have this little bit in this on this side of the tree, and I'm just going to have that Y greater than 12 to ensure that it's also not having that last little bit sticking out below. And so now I have my tree structure built. And so what I'm going to do now, uh, and one of the things you'll notice, I've got a little thicker lines on the side than on the bottom. Uh, let me just show you how to do that quickly if you're wondering about that. Uh, you go to the little edit cogwheel up there, and what you can do is you can actually click on the color, uh, and then you could click, it says uh, the line, the first number is, I'm just going with one, that's how heavy the color is, as opposed to transparent. If it's if it's like anything less than one, it's slightly transparent, but if it's one or above, it's a nice solid color. And then the other number is the thickness of the line. And so if I change that number to five, for example, that line gets thinner. I'm going to keep it as 10, just because when it colors in it, it, uh, it doesn't look as thick when I color that in later. And then you can choose your color along the bottom as well, and you can choose if you want it to be a dotted line, or if you want it to be... Um, a solid line or whatnot. So I'm choosing a solid line here. So then when I've done that, I can just click out of that. And that's now off the settings. It's off the cog wheel now. And so now I'm going to continue building the rest of my tree. And so the next thing I did was I colored this in. And so in order to color this in, what you want to do is you want to replace your equal sign with an inequality. And so what I did is instead of equal, I just said it's uh, the sign Y part of it is less than or equal to that. If it's greater than or equal to, if I do the other way around uh, like this, what you'll notice it does is it actually makes it the wrong side of it. So I want it to be the left side of it uh, or below it, um, not the right side and above it. And so what I did is I did that like so uh, by saying that the negative X minus 50 is greater than or equal to it. And that ensured that side was colored in. So that's exactly what you have to do to color things in on Desmos. What you have to do is actually in, introduce an inequality. And as soon as you do that inequality, it's going to color it in. Now, what I had to do is I had to restrict it a little bit here. I had to go from 50 to 90. And so to go from 50 to 90, that just ensures that I'm coloring the right half of this in. I'm not passing to the other half that the other function is going to cover. And then also the Y greater than cosine of X minus 50 plus 12. The reason that's a restriction on the Y is that just restricts the bottom of it. Because if I don't have that restriction there, like if I got rid of that, then what happens um, is it looks something like that. And it just colors it all the way down and keeps going down forever and ever and ever. So by having that restriction there, uh, uh, Y is greater than that. Y is greater than that. That ensured that was colored in. So if I continue that on, I'm going to now color in the other side using the same rationale as I did before. So now I have my Christmas tree colored in, which is great. But now what we want to do is we want to decorate the Christmas tree. So I'm going to use some other functions now to do that. And so what I did is I chose to use sign functions. But if I add a little something with an X to the sign, that makes it go up on a diagonal. And so actually, I'm going to pull this one up here because this is the next one that I wanted to do. I'm going to start at the bottom here. And when I graph that one, you can see that the um, sine of x plus 0.25x, it gives me a sine function. And that plus 0.25, it like graphs it along the line y equals 0.25x. And so that's a diagonal line. And then the plus 10 just ensures that it's lifted up 10. And so that y-intercept of that line would be like 10. So now that's going to continue going across as a diagonal. And what I want to do now is I want to graph another one a little bit higher up. Let's say about 20 higher up. And so what I did is I used the same function. But instead of plus 10, I had plus 30. And that's going to ensure that it's about 20, or it's exactly 20 higher up. I'm going to continue that pattern of going up by 20s. And so I go and I add 50 now. And I add 70. And now I have it every 20 all the way up the tree. Now, I've also had to restrict that with different restrictions each time because I have to restrict it so that it fits in with the other function on the side. And so those restrictions are changing those limits on what I have x to be all the way along. So now what we want to do is we want to start putting some bulbs on the tree. And so to put some bulbs on the tree, we are going to start by going uh, one circle that I'm going to put right in there. And then I'm going to color that in. And so remember for circles, uh, circles are graphed by x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. And so what I did here is I shifted that over by going minus 40. That shifted at 40 to the right. And then minus 50, that shifted at 50 up. 
and then the radius of that circle was three. So it's a nice size bulb on the tree. So then I did, I colored that in. And so to color that in, I'm just gonna replace the equal sign with an inequality. Remember that in this case, if we want the inside to be colored, we have to say it's less than zero than nine. If I make it greater than nine, it makes everything <laughs> outside of the circle be colored in. And so we wanna make it less than nine and that ensures inside the circle is colored in. So what I did is I just played around with those numbers so that I could find one that, that was uh, about the same side. Uh, it was exactly the same size, but on the other side of the tree, about uh, lined up with the other things. So I made it go, instead of going uh, across 40, I went up 50, across 56, and then I went up 53 instead of up 50. So that is across the tree in a pretty good way. And then I colored that in. And then I just continue that pattern on and on. I continue to find, as I shifted the circle, different numbers where I would shift it to. Then I colored in using a less than inequality. Um, and then what I did is I used this one centered on the, on the tree. So X minus 50, remember the middle of our picture is at 50. And so I did X minus 50 for that. That shifts it exactly 50 to the right. And then I shifted it 32 up, colored that one in. Uh, now I'm gonna do the next one in line there, which is shifted over 68 and up 36. Color that in. Shifted over 50 up 17, color that in. And shifted up over 75 and up 20 and color that in. And so as I continue to do that, I now want to get the bulbs now towards the top of the tree. So I'm going to draw one there and color that in as well. And so now I have all my bulbs on the tree and it's pretty well decorated. Now the star could be done using the absolute value function, but what I'm going to do for the sake of uh, what people might be more familiar with here is linear relationships. And so if I start by just graphing a line, uh, y equals 3x minus 51.75. You had to play with the numbers a little bit. I wanted a steep slope because I want this to be the very tip of the star. And I want it to then, because it has such a steep slope, that straight line would go way down and have a y-intercept that's way less than zero. So I ended up finding a y-intercept of negative 51.75. Now I wanted to stop at 50 because that's where the middle of the of the tree is. And then I wanted to go a little bit out to the left of that. So I chose 48.25. And then what I did is I graphed the other side of that. And you can see there that uh, I'm using the opposite slope. So I had 3x and now I have negative 3x. And then I have to use a y-intercept that's much, much higher in order to get that same symmetry on the other side. And so now I have the top of the star drawn. And what I can do now is I can actually start coloring this in a little bit. Um, but let me just draw the sides first so you can see what that looks like. So if I drew y equals 93, and then you notice I've done this in two different times because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw the line on the left of the star and then also draw the line on the right of the star with my restrictions. So to color those in now, you can see on this function 93, y is greater than 93. So I want it to be uh, above the value 93 and I want it to be less than the function. So I'm gonna color in the left side of this tip of the star and the right side of this tip of the star. And you can see there, that's what I've done. I've restricted the X values so that they're just the left and right side of that star. So that part's been colored in. I have to work through it bit by bit to color this in. There's no way to just magically color the whole star in at the end. So let's now draw more of the star. I next drew the line Y equals X plus 37. I wanted this to be less steep than the other line and to line up with the other things. So I adjusted it so it would do that. I set the restrictions so that it has the same uh, end as the other line. So it comes out to a nice little peak of the star there. And then I go ahead and I'm going to color that in. Now the way to color that in, again, I'm going to work from 93, but I'm going to go below 93 this time. And so I'm going to go from 93 down to X plus 37. And what you can see there is that actually colors it in all the way down uh, a little bit further down. Um, into the tree, which isn't a problem because if the star, star is kind of sitting on the tree, it would have to have some type of base. And that's what it looks like. I'm doing the same thing for the other side. Uh, same idea, drawing that line and then coloring it in by the same rationale. And you can see I'm almost on the star. A few more lines to draw here. I then did y equals 2x minus 4 for a nice steep line there for that uh, the fourth uh, part of the star there. And I'm going to now draw the line below that. I used a less, a lower slope there because I wanted it to not be as steep as the other line. And then I also cut it off at 50. And then at this point, I now color that in by setting the Y value between those two functions I just graphed. And that now colors those in. 
and then restricting it, x is less than 50. And then last but not least is my other two points, uh, other two lines that form the other peak of the star, and then I colored that in as well. And so now you have a Christmas tree fully made up of exponential functions, circular functions, linear functions, trigonometric functions, and you've had a lot of fun learning about transformations of those things. So if you've created something yourself using Desmos or some other graphing program, I'd love it if you wanted to share it below. For more on how to graph uh, sinusoidal functions, check out this video on the left. For more on how to graph transformations, check out this video on the right. Thanks so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.